Welcome to our channel, Everything Best TV. Last time I discussed to you the equivalent record form or the, the ERF, which is a tool used for upgrading of teacher, teacher one to teacher two or teacher two to teacher three and HT1 to HT2 or to HT3. So this video is intended for all teachers and head teachers or yeah, that are planning to have their reclassification under these guidelines on how to have your reclassification. This is specific for personnel or teachers and school heads or head teachers here in the Department of Education, Division of Camarines Sur. So by the way, Division of Camarines Sur is one of the extra large division in the country. Okay, and it's currently in the process of getting the maturity level to accreditation, yes, from the CSC. And so these are the guidelines for reclassification. So aside from ERF, natural vacancy, this one, reclassification, is another process for promotion. It is a movement from one category to another category. It refers to the change in the position or the in the position title requiring the issuance of an appointment with a corresponding increase in rank and salary. There is no vacancy in reclassification, just the same in ERF. There is no vacancy in ERF and there is no vacancy in reclassification. So it is the item which a teacher is occupying that will be reclassified. Therefore, publication of item position is not needed. So if you're a teacher and you want to upgrade either as a classroom in, in a classroom instruction or in a school administrator or in a school administration. So if you want to upgrade in classroom instruction can be to become master teacher. Now, if you're upgrading to become, to become a school administration or an administrator rather, you are looking forward to be upgraded in the position of head teacher or principal. Now, there is a quota system. In elementary, okay, in elementary, the total number of teacher one, teacher two, and teacher three times 10% of it are the numbers needed for, for master teacher positions. So, for example, the total number of teacher one, teacher two, teacher three in the specific district, okay, then times 6.6%, we've got master teacher one uh, position, okay? And for master teacher two position, it should be 3.4% of the entire percentage of teacher one, two, three. Now for secondary, for secondary, one master teacher position, regardless of level, may be allowed per subject area with at least five to seven authorized teacher positions within the school. So let's illustrate this one. Let's say the district has 120 teachers. So the present number of MT1 is eight. That means that 6.6% of the entire employee for teacher one, two, three. And teacher two, we have four in this specific district, which is actually 3.4% of the teacher one, two, three in the district. Therefore, there are total of 12 master teachers in the district. Now in secondary, five teacher plus one can have master teacher, okay? To have head teacher, there should be six plus one a teacher 
can have happy truth. Okay. Okay. These are the qualification standards for head teacher one based on Dep and Order number 39, series of 2007. Okay, so head teacher one is under grade 14, and the level is level two. And the minimum uh, qualification standard is that bachelor's degree in secondary education or bachelor's degree with 18 professional education units with appropriate field of specialization and have an experience of at least one year as a department chairman and a training of at least 24 hours. And the eligibility is RA 1080, meaning um, PAHO passed LET or PBET, okay? So these are the computation of points for DEPED order number 66 series of 2007 for head teacher or department head. So the criteria are performance rating, experience, outstanding accomplishment, education, education, um, education and training, potential, psychological, psychosocial attributes and personality traits. So the performance rating, the performance rating should have 35 points, experience is five points, outstanding accomplishments, 20 points, education and training or training 30 points and potential five points. If you add this all, it gives you 100 points. Okay. Now, this is the table of the position, education requirements, experience requirements, training requirements, and eligibility requirements for head teacher one to head teacher three. So, head teacher one has a salary grade of 14, head teacher two has a salary grade of 15, and head teacher three has a salary grade of 16. Okay. So, um, as you can see, they are like the same in the education requirements, but differ in experience requirements. For you to be head teacher one, you should have an experience as a teacher in charge for one year or teacher for three years. For head teacher two, at least you've been a head teacher for one year or teacher for four years. For head teacher three, you should be head teacher for two years or teacher for five years. Training requirements the same and same with eligibility. Now for head teacher four, head teacher four is salary grade 17 and you should be an HT for three years or an MT for two years for you to be able to be qualified in head teacher position. Okay, for head teacher five, at least HD for four years or MT for three years. For head teacher six, HD for five years or MT for four years. And training requirements are the same, same with the eligibility requirements. Okay. For principal, if you want to become promoted as principal one, I mean upgraded, okay, reclassified, not promoted, I shall say reclassified as principal one, you should have a master's degree in the fields of admin. You've served as two as MT. I have served as HD for two years, um, as HD three for elementary and HD six for secondary. And for principal two, you should be at least one year as principal. For principal three, two years as principal two. And to become principal four, you have served two years as principal three. Okay. And the performance rating for principal one is that at least you have 
a very satisfactory rating for the last three consecutive years or outstanding for the last two years. Okay, same with principle two, three, and four. Okay, here's the computation for depend order number 97, series of 2011, which is the basis for principal and head teacher. So here, the criteria are performance rating, experience, outstanding accomplishments, education and training, potential, psychosocial attributes, and personality traits. So the performance rating is 20 points, experience is 10 points, outstanding accomplishments, 30 points, education and training, 15 points, potential is 10 points, and psychosocial attributes and personality traits, 15 points, a total of 100 points. Now, here are the requirements for reclassification. If you are in BEP and consumer and you think you're qualified and you've met the minimum um, standards or the qualification standards for that specific position, then here are the requirements that you should prepare. First, your plantilla allocation. It's required by the finance division, the matrix for funding requirement, you need a duly accomplished evaluation sheet, duly accomplished position description form, which is in a PDF form, including the unique item number of the position to be reclassified for latest SIPOP. Then statement and functions of the unit, where your position belongs. Also, you may need justification for the reclassification of position if you, you're being reclassified to more than three salary grade. Okay, next, certification that the incumbent fully meets the QS or the qualification standard set by the CSC or the DepEd for the position as reclassified. Then certification of no pending staffing modification. You shouldn't have any pending staffing modification. Then you need rank list. This one is for the purpose of reclassification only, but not really to rank you. Then waiver if loan candidate. Then list of teachers supervised. This one is for those that are aiming for HT position. Item number of every teacher must be indicated. So for HT1 to HT3, you must have at least seven teachers, including the recommending being supervised. For HT4 to HT6, at least you have 21 teachers, excluding the recommending. Okay. Next. List of teachers by the department with item number. This one is for secondary and for elementary list of teachers by school in the district with item number. Also, you need SF7 and class program and a copy of the leaf of the current plantilla or plantilla indicated there again, the name and the item number of the recommendee. Plus you need TOR or your transcript of records. And if you, um, study in private school, you need special order or SO. Then designation as TIC or chairman of the department. This one is for HTs only. Also need updated service record, copy of the previous appointment, PRC certification of good standing, teacher's license, report of board rating, certificates of participation and relevant trainings attended. Now, these are additional documentary requirements for each for, for those um, wanting to be reclassified for school ed positions. So number one, the duly accomplished CS form 212 or the personal data sheets or PDS, certified, authenticated, and verified transcript of records, certificates or proofs of outstanding accomplishments, and you need MEAP certification as to the result of the assessment taken and of course, basic training courses for school heads, which are actually attended by principal two, three, and four. So you need certificates of participation certified by the NEAP. Also from the SBM task force certification as to the rating obtained in the internal and external stakeholders assessment. Division PSB certification and the points obtained in the psychosocial attributes and personality traits assessment. 
enrollment data or form three in the present school assignment, including cluster schools handled, if any. Then list of teachers under supervision with identification of their respective plantilla item number. Okay, um, the reclassification has different phases. Okay, let's start with the phase one. Okay, this one is for elementary master teacher. Okay, so teacher submits the following documents for preliminary evaluation. Letter of intent, list of teachers by school in the district within their unique item number. Latest district data bulletin or summary of the total number of personnel in the district. Now for secondary master teacher and head teacher or department head, the teacher submits documents for preliminary evaluation and these are letter of intent endorsed by the school head, latest SIPOP, list of teachers by department with their unique item number, SF7 for school year 2021 to 2022, class program for 2021 to 2022, POR or transcript of records for your college or master or doctoral degree, then for elementary and secondary school heads, head teachers and principals, school head submits documents for preliminary evaluation, deliberation, and ranking. This one is for reclassification purposes. And what are these? You have letter of intent, basic requirements, and criteria, and documents for evaluation. Now, there are additional documents and requirements necessary for elementary and secondary school heads. For, so this one is for head teachers and principals. So you need NEAP certification, SBM task force certification. Okay, now let's move on to phase two. For phase two, this one applies to master teacher and head teacher. Master teacher for elementary and master teacher and head teacher for secondary. So the teacher submits documents for deliberation and ranking. And this includes the following, the basic requirements, the criteria and documents for evaluation. Then phase three, the SDO personnel validates documents as to the qualifications of applicants. Then the HRM PSB conducts evaluation and deliberation or deliberation of qualified applicants for deliberation. And the SDS recommends teachers and school heads for reclassification. Phase four, SDO personnel prepares the required documents such as PAL, matrix, evaluation sheet, and so on. Uh, this one is for submission and recommendation to the regional depth ed office. Then our phase five, the regional office reviews and validates qualification, item number, and school assignment of applicant and endorses for reclassification to the DBM. Next. DBM takes final action on the request for a classification and prepares the NOSCA and SARO and effects modification in GMIS or GMIS. This one is government. Um, it's a list of, it's an information system. Okay. Next, phase seven, the SDO then receives NOSCA. <coughs> Excuse me. When there is a NOSCA ready, a division memorandum for teachers and school heads with NOSCA is issued and SDO prepares appointment as reclassified for attestation by the CSC. And so then, the teacher receives original copy of attested appointment. Next, after that, we have phase eight. Here, SDO submits copy of attested appointment to our PSU, original payroll services unit with other required documents. Phase nine, the regional office adjusts salary of reclassified position in the regular payroll and transmits list of reclassified positions to DBM. And phase 10, SDO submits list of reclassified position in SIPOP format to the DBM through the regional office for updating purposes. 
So here is the workflow on reclassification of position. Okay, so submit request and require documents to the DO. Then the division office receives and evaluates documents as to the completeness and authenticity. Once complete and authentic, evaluate the, qualifi the qualification of applicants based on the DEPED order. If qualified, then the division office prepares and submit the matrix. And then the regional office reviews, validates. Then if there is a deficiency or no deficiency, when there is no deficiency, endorse request for reclassification to DBMRO. Now, once there is a deficiency, they're going to return it to the division office. Then once endorsed, the DBM takes final action on request for reclassification, and then they prepare the NOSCA and SARO and effects in the modification in, in the government members insurance um, information system. Yes, government modification. Um, I think government members insurance. Uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Government. No, I'm trying to remember what is GMS, GMIS. Um, the GMIS is actually it's actually a list. It's a list of information about about the about the updating. Okay, now I already know. Um, GMIS is Government Manpower Information System. This one is a database. Okay. Next is, when this done, then the regional office receives the copy of the NOSCA. And the division office also receives the copy of the NOSCA. And afterwards, prepares the appointment as, RAS, as reclassified for attestation by the CSC. Then after that, the teacher will receive the original copy of attested document. And also the division office submits copy of attested appointment to RPSU with other required documents and adjusts. Uh, for, for salary adjustment. So the regional office adjusts salary of reclassified position in the regular payroll. And the division office submits list of reclassified position in SIPOP format to DBM through regional office for updating purposes. And then they're going to transmit the list of the rec reclassified positions to DBM. So um, what I can say is that um, taking the steps for reclassification really takes time. So it really needs your patience. So be patient when you do it. Now, take note that an attitude of gratitude brings great things. So let's be grateful with the work that we have. Again, let's be grateful with the work that we have. And when we're grateful with it, we are going to surely do our best in the work we're in. And it's going to be easy to achieve our goals of upgrading. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. That's it for now. And goodbye. I hope you learned something from this.